。OK， 你这都你教我多好弄呢？啊，有你去到我们上到上到有没帮办的？别莫讲到那不是要办的。OK， 好的啊，我教你那些的多。我尿路中北呢，要莫着急吃，啊，到那时的八月啊，了要到毛那时的八月啊，到年节呢要八，可能 President Trump 他或者啊，那就 Republican， 我来目标呢，我就哎，那时的八到那家了，这当家的，我那时的叫，呃，你老发展路边的，你路边和 Spencer 呢，一度，我好了到啊，路方干活呢，啊，你那八啊 ，President Trump 啊，有去啊。ตัวอ๋อก็ตายแต่ชนะเนี่ยตัวที่ฉันเกิดเต้นนะโอเคนี่ฉันเลยป้าหน้าจะเองหรอนะนะวิเดียหน้าเดียนู้นน่ะย่
and still came within 44,000 votes, okay? Now, if you compare that to what happened in 2008 with McCain, lost by almost 300,000 votes. Romney lost by 227,000 thousand votes. And President Donald J. Trump came within 44,000 votes with, with no staff here, okay? Today, look at the number of staffers that we have in Minnesota. We have a huge staff here. We're opening up offices in every corner of this beautiful state. Why? Because we're going to win Minnesota. In fact, I've got a great data point for all of you to hear. Minnesota was a state that showed the largest, the largest bump in polling since our RNC convention. And that's because of all the work that you all have been doing. And I'm not going to just stand here and just, you know, obviously try to persuade you guys, right? Because you wouldn't be here. You're already on board. And you all know the reasons why you're supporting the president. So I'm here to ask all of you, as Eric Trump said the other night, it's time to commit to more. Thank you for everything that you've done. But if you give an extra hour or two each day or per week, it's going to be it's going to, it's going to be very valuable in this campaign. It could be what makes the difference in this campaign between winning and losing in this campaign. Yeah. We have got to talk, keep talking to all of our friends and our family and our co-workers, and you should tell them your own story of why you're supporting President Donald J. Trump. That's how we grow this. That's how we grow our base for the president. Now, on a little bit of a somber note. We had a, uh, an incident that happened just a short while ago with a volunteer. And we don't have any details. Actually, two volunteers. But I want you to keep the staff in this state in your prayers. I want you to keep it all our volunteers in all of our prayers. And I'm sorry I can't share any more details because it's something uh, potentially tragic that just happened. Okay? Um, so I couldn't come up here knowing that without knowing that. Um, but more, de more details will be will be coming out probably shortly, um, and 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 it's because of because of people like these volunteers who were involved in this horrible incident that I'm going to keep fighting for this for this country. It's a tough fight, but it's well worth everything that we're doing. So I thank you all for having me in your great state. Of course, I've got to run, uh, but thank you all. God bless you for what you're doing. God bless our country. And God bless our great president, Donald yeah. Trump. So thank you guys for that. Good morning. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, Jennifer Carnahan, the ch chairwoman of the Minnesota yeah. GOP. Jennifer. Well, thank you all for being here tonight. This is probably the best turnout we've had for any office opening since we started. Thank you for being here. For those of you I haven't met yet, my name is Jennifer Carnahan and I was elected as the first female and the first Asian American to represent the Republican Party. We have 50 days until the general election. However, early voting opens this Friday, September 18th, and we need to go out there and make history and say to the world loudly and say to Minnesota loudly, we strongly stand with our president, Donald J. Trump, and all of our other Republicans that are running for office this year. It is our duty to go out there and make history and flip Minnesota's 10 electoral votes. Let me tell you quickly why I am a Republican and why this particular election is so critical to all of us in this room. Uh, so for those of you that don't know my background story, I am from South Korea. On the day that I was born in 1976, I was found abandoned on the back doorstep of a rural hospital in South Korea next to a garbage can. And it was fortunate for me that the hospital workers found me, uh, took care of me, and got me to an orphanage. And then five months later, I was very blessed to be adopted by my parents, John and Cinder Carnahan, and I came to Minnesota. And on that day, I became a proud American, a proud Minnesotan, and very, very blessed every single day I wake up to live in this country. As I was 
growing up, my parents raised me to believe very strongly in the American dream. They instilled in me from a young age that if I was willing to go out there and put in the hard work, it didn't matter what my background was, it didn't matter where I came from, but if I was willing to go out there and work and I believed in something, this country would allow me to achieve whatever I set my mind to. And that is why I'm a Republican. Because our party stands behind everybody, no matter their background, to achieve the American dream. Yes. Where the Democrats on the left, they want to put us into a little checkbox right. and tell us right. Right. who we are. We have to identify yeah. by what we look like on the outside, mm -hmm. and then they cap us at you can only achieve this in life, that's and right. that's not what the American no, dream that's right. is all about. That's right. so that's You, there are 17 million Asian Americans in our country, making up nearly 6% of the population. In Minnesota alone, we have nearly 300,000 Asian Americans, making up almost 5% of the population. Our voices matter. Yes. Yes. And when you look at a state like Minnesota, where the president in 2016 lost by 44,000 votes, or 1.5%, it's us, it's our community, it's our voices that we can be the changing tide. We can go out there and flip this state for President Trump on November 3rd in just 50 yeah, yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have to say a special shout out to Shia because Shia has been such a bright, energetic, vibrant vo voice in our party. He's opened up doors for us that we haven't known existed and even though the primary didn't turn out how we wanted, you know what did happen is we were able to turn around the next day and say to Shia, we need you to come to work full time for the party and campaign and make sure we keep that momentum going because that's how we're going to do it in Minnesota in these uh, areas that have historically been very difficult for Republicans. So again, we thank you all for coming. I know everyone here, and this is where you guys are so important, you each have a story of your own. You each have a journey and a path that brought you to America, that brought you to Minnesota, and that is causing you to sit in this room tonight. My sister also adopted from Korea. Her husband is from Laos, and his parents fled during the Laotian War when they were pregnant with my brother-in-law. They fled across the country barefoot while bullets were being shot by, at their head, and they made their way to a refugee camp in Thailand and uh, resettled here in Brooklyn Park. And now my sister and her husband have three beautiful children. But everybody in this room, you have your own stories. And it's us getting out there and talking to voters and sharing our personal stories and why we are supporting our president and other Republicans. That's honestly what's going to make the difference because it authentically touches people in a meaningful way. And so we need all of you over these last 50 days to step up and help us because we can do great things. And as we all know, we have to fight for the American dream for the next generation. So thank you very much. Okay. I apologize, we have a very special guest with us tonight as well. Um, when I was elected chairwoman of Minnesota in 2017, a few months later, another amazing strong woman was elected as a chairwoman for the Hawaii Republican Party. She's served our country. She's become one of my dearest friends uh, that serves as state party chairs, and she flew all the way to Minnesota to be with us here tonight. So I want to introduce the Hawaii party chairwoman, Sherlene Ostrom. As we say in Hawaii, aloha, Minnesota. Aloha. I'm so proud to be here. The, the turnout is amazing, and it, it is a testament to what Minnesota can bring to our country. Um, as Jennifer said, I'm a, the chairwoman from Hawaii. Uh, my parents are immigrants from the Philippines. And uh, they immigrated um, to Hawaii. And um, I was present at my mother and father's citizenship uh, uh, ceremony. Um, so I chose uh, to serve my life in service to our nation. I was in the United States Air Force for 25 years and retired as a colonel. And the reason I share that is because it is so important for us 
from wherever we come from to be in service to our nation. And this is so, this is a community that I know understands how hard it is to defend the nation, to defend where you came from. And I, I will tell you, um, when I came home to Hawaii after I retired five years ago, I knew that my service to our country had to continue. And that began with uh, President Trump's campaign in 2016. And as uh, the Chairman Carnahan said, I ran for chairman because I know this is important. In Hawaii, in Hawaii, the Asian population makes up 49% of Hawaii. Wow. But we are the most democratic nation, I mean, democratic state in the entire nation. So I'm gonna show them this picture that this is what it's supposed to be. from your Asian brothers and sisters across the Pacific. We are rooting for Minnesota. I call your chairman all the time and I say, how's Minnesota doing? We're cheering from afar, from across the ocean. And here we are in the middle of the Pacific, the nations that are really closest to where we're all from. And we believe in the strong national defense, a strong country for, uh, for our country. And I'll tell you, we pray every day for Minnesota. Yeah. Because we know the way Minnesota goes, so goes the nation. Yes. Yes. So please do, as everyone's saying, please tell your friends. You have a lot of friends in Hawaii. And I'm watching every day. We watch the numbers every day. And I thank you very much for having me. And thank you very much for, for voting for Donald J. Trump for president. Thank right. you. Yeah. just have a few people to thank for um, bringing everyone together this evening for this uh, grand opening. Um, from the national chairman of the Hmong community in the U.S., Mr. Uh, Tufong Lo, where are you? Would you please raise your hand? Everyone, please uh, welcome Woo! Mr. Chairman Tufong Lo. We also have with us the chairman of the Vietnamese community in Minnesota. Mr. Thomas Cal. Thomas. I want to tell all of you how committed Thomas is. He was here today helping me climbing to make sure the signs are out, 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 out there for all of you to see. So please thank Thomas once again. Yeah. We also have with us the chairman of the Cambodian Community of Minnesota, Mr. Sapal Knapp. <laughs> Chairman of the Lao Republic, Republican in Minnesota, Mr. Anand Sivilai. <laughs> Thank you for your support. With us this evening, we also have the Hmong Council of 18 Chairman, Mr. Nahua Moa. Thank you for your support. Also with us this evening is Chairman of the Voice of India Community, Mr. Johnson Madamo. Where are you, Mr. Madamo? Thank you. We have been working very hard flipping Indian votes to Republicans across the country for President Donald Trump. We thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for your leadership. Mr. Mo. Next we have uh, Chairman Mai Tong Her and Colonel Vang from the Hmong Veterans. Also all the way from La Crosse, the former Chairman of the Lao Veterans, uh, Mr. Nadulo and uh, Major Vu. Also, um, I'd like to recognize uh, Chairman Na Peng Xiong and Xiong United for joining us this evening. And I want to thank, um, a special thank to all of the endorsed candidates uh, tonight, especially Alexandra, 
uh, deputy running for Senate in the district. Alexandra, where are you? Also, we have a representative from Jason Lewis' office, who's here this evening. Jason Lewis, where are you? Emily, thank you. Finally, we have one additional uh, speaker that um, uh, Tyler is the deputy is going to introduce to all of you. Tyler. Well, guys, I'm sure everyone in this crowd has seen this man before. He hardly needs an introduction. He sells about the best pillow in the history of the world. He's a born again Christian and aspiring, inspiring leader. And he is also the chairman of the Trump campaign in Minnesota. Mike Lindell, it's my honor to introduce you. Sir. Thank you all. Um, it's an honor to be here speaking before you. I have, uh, of all my employees, one third of them are Asian Americans. And every one of them is voting for Donald Trump. <laughs> I want to give you a little, a little background I, here myself. Um, you know, as you know, I grew up in Minnesota. I was born and raised here. I was, um, I didn't think politics mattered. I was an addict. I spent a lot of time on the streets of St. Paul and Minneapolis. And, uh, but I experienced the American dream. When I got set free by God of, of my drugs in January 16, 2009, I came out of my, I had never voted, I didn't know anything about politics, and I'm going, what did I miss? What happened to Minnesota? I'm going, we, were given, we had a president that was giving money to an evil empire, my friends were losing their houses, people were unemployed, all these things that were going on, I'm going, what did I miss? And then in the, in the, um, the summer of 2016, uh, Donald Trump reached out to me, and he wanted me to meet him in New York City at Trump Tower. And I go, well, you know, what is this? You know, what's this going to be about? And I thought, you know, they made money. What's going on? And and uh, it was just him and me. They said you're never going to meet him alone. They said whatever you do, don't tell him you were a crack addict. You know. And, uh, and I walked in there. It was just him and I in this meeting. And one of the first things I said, you know, he's going, Mike. You know, you make all your pillows here. I want to bring the jobs back to the U.S. I want to. And I, I said, you know what, I used to be a crack addict. I'm going to have this neck this time. Look around, is that okay? And, uh, and, I, and I said, uh, I, I want to uh, help addiction, people with addiction. And he goes, and I'm going to rid, get rid of the drugs. I'm going to stop them pouring into our country. But we talked for over a half hour. And all these things that he said he was going to do, I'm walking out there. I go, I finally, after 40 minutes, we, he had to do a speech in Ohio. And, and he said, uh, he says, Mike, I gotta do a speech. I haven't even read it yet. I took that as the time to leave. We took a picture and I walk out though and I go, he's gonna be, if he does what he says, he's gonna be the greatest president ever. Yeah. 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 And, and what happened there is is um what happened, I, I'm going, did I just you know, he had no agenda, it's like talking to your best friend. Um, it was his heart was to help people. I've met many people in my life from all walks of life. And it was just genuine. I walked out though and I talked to so many of his employees and said, is this real? He said, yes, he's the best boss, the best leader. Um, he's a, and each one of them had an individual story how he had personally helped them out. And I'm going, wow. So I get back here to Minnesota and I wanted to tell the world about it here in Minnesota, what I had just seen. And the press, I put a press release out to the press here in Minnesota that I had met Donald Trump. and. Uh, and you know what? They didn't reach out to me. Normally they say, you know, if I tell them anything, they want to know the story. But this time they called me a racist. They called me all kinds of names on emails, and I never got to go before the, before the press. And, uh, and, but I knew I was doing the right thing, and I went all in. I mean, right. I just went in, and uh, of course I was attacked, but I knew of God. I was doing the right thing. I prayed about it. I was doing the right thing. And now, look at three and a half years later, we have proof of concept. He has kept his promises. He's done everything and more that he said he was going to do. And I'll tell you right now, what I've been what I've been going around and telling people, this isn't an election 
We have something here in Minnesota, an opportunity, a Minnesota, an opportunity of a lifetime. This just is an election where you're going to all go tell your, hey, we got to get out and vote. Make sure you vote. No, you need to tell your Democrat friends and your independents, you need to tell them, hey, look at the party you have, that party's gone. Democrats, they're not bad people, it's the leadership we have here in Minnesota. The Democratic mayor and the Democratic uh, governor, these guys made some of the worst decisions in history. We are the ground zero of the election and the spiritual warfare going on in this country. And we need to go out, and it's very easy to talk. I just did commercials for the president. We filmed them right here about two weeks ago. You're going to see them all over the TV. And you guys need to say the same, same message. I had all these Democrats in a room that were flipping, and we just organically asked them. I, I came in. I was the host. I said, and I want to meet them ahead of time. I want to be like a, a, a real commercial, like my pillow, where nothing stays. You just do it, right? And I asked these guys, how come you're flipping? Some of them, I was a Democrat 30 years and I'm flipping because a lot of it was because their Christian values are no longer there. Yes. That they're over here. These are, they're, if you're over here, you're for abortion, you're for killing babies, you're for all this. Yeah. And if you're opinion. over here, and all these beliefs they have. One guy says, you know, I'm a Democrat 40 years and every time I was promised up before an election, they would make promises of family values and all these, and we're going to help people. But nothing came to pass after they got elected. Right. And then they look over here and he says, now I look across after three and a half years with this president, I look up and Donald Trump has done all that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, And you've got the American dream. You have it. That, you know, This is what we're here for, the American dream, so we have joyful lives each, each and every day. Some of these guys said, you know what, if I do vote Democrat, that party, that ship sailed a long time ago. They're voting for leadership, which we have an example of, like here in Minnesota. Those are radical Democrats. Yeah, they're, yeah. They are, you vote Democrat, now you're voting for something. You ain't going to be free. It's, I told tell you, our slogan is keep America free. And this is what we need to tell our friends that are Democrats and, you, and our friends that are independents and say, hey, you guys, look at the stuff before this pandemic. Look where we were at. The great, the highest, uh, you know, the highest employment at my company. We, the wages were going up all around me. We paid good at my bill, but that people all around us were going up in wages. Everybody was getting careers instead yes. of jobs. We and uh, we had the highest consumer confidence in history before this pandemic. And I'll tell you, you have people, entrepreneurs, taking chances here in Minnesota, taking. Go, going into businesses because you know what they had a safety net to fall back on with good paying jobs and uh, and right now if we hadn't had this president leading us through this pandemic imagine where we'd be with, with mad national decisions that were that would be made like if it was a democrat like they made our local decisions here and destroyed our state destroyed minneapolis i walked the streets for the first time Two weeks ago, I went down there and walked those streets where I used to, you know, back in the day, I did some stuff on, I'm not, you know, kind of ashamed of. But they, uh, but these, these, are my, these are my friends that lost their businesses, you know, when uh, they lost their businesses and they weren't part of that. These, these leaders let their businesses get destroyed. I just talked to a guy um, just two days ago. He came back to Minnesota. He's been away for three months. He's going to school here at one of the colleges. And he came back, a place he rented in Minneapolis, and he pays rent on. And he got there, and they had broke in, and these five people were that were living there using his stuff. And we have something here, so there's some law called squatting. It's some squatter law where you can come in, and he, he, he called the police, and he couldn't get him to leave. He took his stuff, and he moved out of state. He says, I can't take it. You know, Business is being moved out of Minneapolis. We need to save our state. We need to save our country. Yeah. 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 This is the most important election in history. Yes. Yeah, we're voting for future, but we're voting for right now too. And we have advantage of we have a couple advantages. We have we it all started here, these terrible decisions. So it's easy to tell people, look at what bad decisions that leadership can do and how politics can affect us all. And then we also have a, a congressman, Elon Omar, that wants some completely out in left field. And people, say, people say all the time, they go, oh, you know, we, oh, we, you guys got to get rid of her. You gotta, you know, how does she ever get voted in? Well, you know what? Right now, she's a good example of what you don't want. So we've got her. It's easy to tell. Once again, people that are, are Democrat, they don't want that kind of leadership, this radical socialist. They don't want this stuff. They want the freedoms that we know we had a taste of. And the good place we were at 
before this pandemic. And I want to tell you something. The, uh, what, there was things that Minnesota was not following even before the pandemic. The highest black unemployment in the United States was in Minneapolis. Did they all know that before the pandemic? In Minneapolis, because you know why? It, but Minneapolis and St. Paul, what they don't do, they Minnesota did do, the, the stuff that other cities and states were getting from Donald Trump, yeah. the Opportunity Zones and all these other things, yeah. and vision centers from my friend Ben Carson and, yeah. and these things. They weren't doing it, they were pushing back in Minnesota. Yeah. They don't want his help. When this pandemic came in, the, the president called our governor and said, hey, you got two, we want to send in 10,000 National Guard. He says, well, it kept getting worse. He says, I'll take 200. Well, that's like a flood, of anomaly flood in history where you have a thousand sandbags and you go, you know what, just give me 10. Right. right. Now, why would you do that if it wasn't political? Right. I have seen now, since, since I've gotten involved with and become friends with the president and become, and where I'm at now, I know now politics pay up a role in every single, single thing we do. It can take away our freedoms, it can just change us. It can make us miserable, it can, it can bring happiness. I mean, there's a... Uh, but terrible decisions that are made by politicians that make them for political reasons, not for the people. That's what's happening. We have a great president that actually turned the party, the Republican Party, into the Common Sense Party. Yeah. Yeah. all of you for what you guys are doing out there and I'm just saying if you could bring that message right now in this election we have something we didn't have in 16 we have proof of concept we have proof of what this president can do in this administration yeah. what great leadership can yeah. do it should be very easy in Minnesota I don't care who you're talking to you don't have to argue you're not going to argue with some crazy radical argue with a normal person that's on the left here on the Democrat going hey look at Look at all this, you know, look what's happened with our bad leadership. Look what happened with our lives and how we, our lives improved on the things that are made in, in, uh, in pol by politicians. And we have, we have a great businessman making great decisions for our country and for us as a, every day. And I will tell you this, I know him personally. Every decision he makes is made without, without politics in mind. It's what's going to help the people. That's each right. and every one of yeah. And every people. That's right. And every yeah. single person. Yes. And it makes me, it saddens me when they call him names, racist, and but they did it to me. Yeah. So, you know, if they did it to me, it can happen to anyone. Yeah. You know, they just, I was just attacked on a news station the other day. I won't name no names but it was CNN. <laughs> <laughs> and they came after me 24 minutes, they attacked me because I'm friends with the president and I'm backing him. And it doesn't make sense. I'm going, what did I do? Because I believe in what I believe in? I don't badmouth them. You know? Uh, you know? And, uh, but I might start. <laughs> but thank you all. And we are going to win Minnesota. I promise the president. And I said, with every one of your help, we're going to get this done, and we're going to, do, and we're going to show the world where, the, where this bad stuff started. We can turn it around and make it with a, an opportunity, a bad opportunity like God does. He chooses bad and turns it into good. We're going to take what the bad things that happened in Minnesota and turn it into a miracle. That's right, Minnesota Mike. Minnesota miracle. Yeah. <laughs> Tonight they want a photo with you because we are all sleeping on your pillows. So please stay as long as you can so that we can take picture of you. This photos in the back is what the uh, Asian Southeast Asian community has done. The price that they pay to be in America to be free. They want a photo with you, so please stay as long as you can. So we're going to let you guys take photos of them, but I have a few words to, uh, to uh, wrap up. We cannot win if you do not help us. Okay? We have to carry this momentum into action. And so all of you should register your name, your address, and your phone number. If you cannot stay and help tonight, we have 50 days left to the election. Okay? We want you to participate and do what you can. We will call you if you're not able to stay tonight. But when we call, please answer and do what you can. We can show you how to make phone calls. So we have, we have created a system where the Hmong will be able to call only Hmong household. And the Cambodian can do the same. And the Vietnamese can do the same. And the Laotian can do the same. 
We have that technology, and you can only knock on Hmong doors if you want to. Or can, uh, the same with the Vietnamese or the other Southeast Asian race. So let's get together, and let's join forces, and let's turn Minnesota red. So, yeah, together, we're going to turn Minnesota red. And if we turn Minnesota red, we're going to make history. Yeah. And what we're going to be making history today is the first time a sitting president would have put an office in the heart of the Asian community. Let's put our hands together for President Trump. I want all of you to be there. Yeah. This office is not for me. It's not for Tyler or for Spencer. This office is for everybody, for all of you. You can come here anytime to make up the sign. We will train you. We will teach you. This is the place, the ground zero, where we're going to teach the next leaders of the American uh, Republican Party and American freedom. Thank you so very much. And please stay as long as you can. And we have people this evening that can actually help you and train you. 